Have you ever wondered how ancient warriors mastered the art of combat? Today we delve deep into the wisdom of a legendary samurai, Miyamoto Musashi, through his timeless work, The Book of Five Rings. This book is not merely about martial arts, but also a profound exploration of strategy and philosophy, etched with the ink of experience and reflection. In the first chapter, titled Earth, Musashi lays the groundwork for understanding the rhythm of battle. He emphasizes that every fight has its own tempo, its own beat. To master this rhythm, one must dedicate themselves to rigorous training, both mentally and physically. It's about becoming one with the sword, and through it, understanding the flow of the universe itself. Musashi's philosophy transcends the battlefield, offering insights applicable to our daily lives. As he puts it, you must understand that there is more than one path to the top of the mountain. How does water, fire, and wind relate to martial arts? This might seem like an abstract question, but Miyamoto Musashi gives us a profound answer in his Book of Five Rings. Let's dive into the second chapter, Water, and explore his wisdom. Musashi likens the way of the warrior to the fluidity of water. Just as water adapts to its surroundings, flowing around obstacles or filling any shape it's poured into, a martial artist too must be adaptable. In the face of adversity and unexpected circumstances, one must remain flexible, bending and reshaping oneself to overcome. The ability to adapt, to flow like water, is a cornerstone of strategic thinking and a key to victory in any battle, be it physical or mental. But adaptability alone isn't enough. The next chapter, Fire, teaches us about the importance of controlling the rhythm of battle. Like a raging fire, a warrior must be able to dictate the tempo, to heat things up or cool them down as required. This isn't about brute force, but rather about strategic domination. It's about understanding your opponent's rhythm and disrupting it, causing them to falter and lose their balance. It's about seizing the initiative and keeping your opponent on their back foot. Finally, we come to the wind chapter. Here, Musashi warns us against being swayed by the winds of others' styles and tactics. Just as wind can push us off course, so too can the influence of others' strategies and techniques. It's essential to learn from others, yes, but we mustn't lose sight of our own style, our own strengths. In the heat of battle, it's our unique rhythm, our unique approach that will carry the day. So, what do water, fire, and wind teach us about martial arts? They teach us to adapt like water, control the rhythm like fire, and stay true to our own style, undeterred by the winds of influence. They teach us to be fluid, fierce, and unyielding. In Musashi's words, do not be influenced by the enemy. Move according to your own rhythms. So, what lies beyond the earth, water, fire, and wind? We've journeyed through the first four elements in the Book of Five Rings, but now we reach the final chapter, the Void. For Musashi, the Void represents a state of no mind, a place where a warrior acts without conscious thought, where instinct and training merge into fluid action. This concept of the Void, it's not just about the absence of thought, but it's about the presence of everything. It's about reaching a state of mind where you're not hindered by your own thoughts or distractions. It's about achieving a state of pure focus, pure action, and pure reaction. The Void is the pinnacle of Musashi's philosophy, the culmination of mastering the elements of earth, water, fire, and wind. It's the ultimate state of awareness, a state where the warrior is completely in the moment, acting and reacting not out of conscious thought, but out of pure instinct, honed by rigorous training and experience. This brings us to the overall message of Musashi's Book of Five Rings. The importance of rigorous training cannot be overstated. It's through training that we develop discipline. It's through discipline that we gain control. And it's through control that we achieve independence. Independence in this context means being able to adapt and react to any situation, any opponent, and any environment. But perhaps the most profound takeaway from Musashi's treatise is the concept of adaptability. Musashi emphasizes the need to be fluid, to adapt to the circumstances, and to be like water, taking the shape of whatever container it's in. This adaptability is not just for the battlefield, it's for life. It's about being able to navigate the challenges and obstacles that life throws at us with grace, agility, and resilience. As Musashi reminds us, in strategy, it is important to see distant things as if they were close and to take a distanced view of close things. And with that, we close our exploration of Musashi's Book of Five Rings.